Okay, impact number five, here we go. Uh, this one is really funny to talk about, especially because uh, this Zoom call today was not planned. So this action impact is straight from the cuff and the term that we are going over is planning. Um, what's funny about this topic is uh, if you need to phone a friend on how to plan better, I am not the person to call. Um, but I do have a good perspective on this one because of how much I've struggled to plan in the past. So, uh, that's why I chose to go over this one. And, you know, these, these impacts are all about improving. And, uh, so I wanted to call myself out on this one. So, uh, planning is something that we've already should have started. <laughs> one thing I will say that when you are good in the moment, it's really hard to plan because um, you can just throw yourself into the situation and kind of figure it out at the time. Uh, I'm the type of person that can show up at a rehearsal 20 minutes before you go on stage. Hey, what am I doing? Oh, okay, cool. Act like this. Okay, great. Let's do that. Um, I've found that out about myself over the last two years. And uh, also that quality is, it's really come out on a wakeboard. Um, kind of being spontaneous and I didn't really even know that that's what was happening at the time but it always seemed like when uh, I would just take it one trick at a time I would do so much better than if I was trying to you know deliberately plan the whole run now obviously I would visualize the whole run and that's why I'm going to be talking about goals on this segment but um, you know when it comes to being in the moment you really have to find that balance um, so far I haven't really done a good job finding that balance and uh, it's something that I definitely want to work on because uh, you can be so consumed with trying to plan the future that you forget about today but also you can be so in the moment that that moment's eventually going to run out and then you've got people standing around saying okay what's next um, and a lot of times if you stand there like hey what's next for too long uh doubt really starts to creep in there and it, it's you know you people will lose confidence in you pretty quick when you're flying by the seat of your pants I've definitely proved that to be true um, one thing I'd like to say about planning is uh, try to plan something special at least every 12 days um, you know to some people that may seem like a long time and to others be like man I'd be I'd be glad to have that 12th day off. And um, I think there's definitely some indifference there too, because uh, by having that structure and that plan, maybe it's even just something small, like cooking your favorite dish or uh, going to the movie theater again, you know, whenever that's a thing, or uh, maybe it's something big, like taking a trip to the beach or uh, putting yourself up in a hotel room for the night. Um, having something like that every 12 days, I think is really healthy. I actually heard a study not too long ago that said, uh, you should hang out with your boys or your girlfriends at least every two weeks. Um, you know, one night of the week, at least every two weeks, just to have that recenter and, um, you know, just get back in front of all your friends and have that thing to look forward to and, and to plan for. Uh, Again, I, I can't stress this enough how big of a weakness this is for me. When I look at lack of planning and um, being in the moment, it's blown up in my face a lot uh, to where I, I'm beginning to start to preempt that. But, you know, still having a routine is very important. And, and I've still got to figure out what that routine is for me uh, with my my quarantine, I'm kind of like stuck in limbo. So that's something that I'm going to be looking towards of, hey, you know what, I wake up at 540 in the morning, uh, then I plan for 15 minutes on what I'm going to be doing throughout the day, or uh, maybe I go to sleep knowing what I'm going to be doing the next day. I always seem to play golf a lot better when I think about what course I'm playing and what I'm going to do uh, the night before. So maybe I'll put that into perspective. But uh, when it comes to setting goals, that's something that uh, I don't think you can do enough of. I guess if somebody starts to 
doubt your goals. Um, you're on the right track. <laughs> uh, one thing that I hear a good bit, and it's kind of a dreamer statement, if you will, but um, if your dreams don't scare you, they aren't big enough. I say if your goals, um, if you don't have those goals set out and if they're not something that's like, well, that's going to be tight, um, that gives you room for growth. So lean into that, you know, do that more often. Um, you know, if you don't hit a goal, that's okay. That's why you set more goals. Um, this is something that, you know, for me, it, it kind of brainwashed me a little bit there, but it, it is important. You know, if, if you tell big goals to small minded people, they won't get it. Uh, they, they won't understand the, the big aspect of it. And, and all they see is this little piece of the pie versus, hey, the whole grand scheme of things. And uh, I got caught up in all of the grand schemes. I'm basically juggling, you know, it was great. But um, yeah, make sure that you're telling your goals um, and voicing those out. But don't, do, don't get discouraged um, if somebody kind of doubts your goals because uh, number one, if they're willing to state their opinion, they probably love you somewhat and uh, they just don't want to see you get hurt or they're a hater. And at that point, you're like, hey, there's, you know, let me take a step up there. Uh, but either way, you can find something positive about somebody doubting your goals. So uh, just make them. Um, another thing with planning that has blown up in my face a couple of times is uh, Remember that nobody wants to be a fallback plan. Um, you know, that's just never a good situation to be in when and it's very concerning if, you know, if that's the topic at hand, because um, I, I try not to have a fallback plan at all because that keeps me from being tough and, and pushing through the, the adversity. But when it comes to planning, um, it's a way to show somebody has first priority. You know, if I make plans to go and see you, um, that's great. If I make plans to be in the area and then happen to see you, how often does that really line up? You know, oh, hey, you know what? I thought I was going to have something at three, but it's going to be 3.30. Hey, I missed you. Next time I get back in town, I'll hit you up. Uh, if you've had that happen in your life, it's because you didn't plan around the person, you planned around the event, and then you tried to get the person to come. Um, again, learn from my mistakes. Uh, it's so real. Also, planning gives you a why. I think I already kind of stated that, but uh, it's just really important that you know that having that special event 12 days out, it gives you a reason to work harder. Uh, it gives you something to strive for versus kind of just being aimlessly, you know, floating around in the abyss uh, that is 2020. <laughs> uh, I wrote really small here. Oh, this is good. Yeah. Something to look forward to is, is the best way to find happiness. I feel like I'm repeating myself, but maybe by saying it a couple different ways, it'll stick with one of you guys. But, uh, or me when I hear this video over. Um, but yeah, having something to look forward to. Same thing that ties me back into the hope. Uh, with hope, there needs to be planning. Uh, so remember that. And uh, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Um, I'm going to get back to planning. And I uh, hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your night.